All right. Thank you, sir. Well, shalom, everybody. Here we are on the last day. This is the 18th of the month. But it's uh, really, what, the 21st or 22nd of Yahweh's, isn't it? 22nd, I think, of Yahweh's uh, calendar. Hallelujah. So here we are on the last day of the feast. And man, I tell you what, it's been a trip. But praise Yahweh, he gave us this uh, facility to meet in and gave us uh, brethren here to, to meet with. And uh, now we, we got to go back home and, and it's going to feel funny tomorrow not uh, coming back for services again. It's going to be an empty feeling. But anyway, let's uh, let's take our hymn notes, and I'll get mine here. Let's. Uh, oh no! Here, this thing goes crazy on me again. Let's go to. Uh, I gotta find it. I gotta find this stuff because we don't have the the numbers on here. What is your song book with your name on it, buddy? I don't know. Does anybody have a song book that has Jerry on it? Let's sing. Uh, let's sing. Uh, In the year of jubilee, that's number thirty. Song number thirty. Page nine. The prison shall be open, the captives all set free. Glorious restoration, mighty victory, sons of God appearing, year of Jubilee. Year of Jubilee, the prison shall be open, the captives all set free. What a glorious restoration, what a mighty victory, the sons of God appearing. In the year of Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, in the year of Jubilee, the prison shall be open, the captives all set free. What a glorious restoration, what a mighty victory, the sons of God appearing in the year of Jubilee. <laughs> that That's a fast song. I had a prob problem keeping up with it. <laughs> but uh, look at what it says. The sons of Yah appearing in the year of Jubilee. Leviticus 25 and 61, Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. It's going to be a awesome thing. Let's go to number, well, let's see. Yeah, number 26, his name is wonderful. <clears throat> his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. 
His name is wonderful, Yahweh Elohim. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Yahweh Elohim. He's the great shepherd, rock of all ages, almighty Lord is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him, his name is wonderful. Yahweh Elohim, His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, Yahweh Elohim, He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Yahweh Elohim. He's the great shepherd, rock of all ages, almighty hell is he. Let's do number 23. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Okay. <clears throat> Is that it? Yeah.
Oh, yeah. I want to do from the rising of the sun. <laughs> if I can find it. <laughs> It's number 18 on page 7, but there it is. From the rising of the sun to the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be the rising of the sun, the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. For Yahweh is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. And who is likened to Yahweh Elohim, who dwelleth on high? Rising of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. Of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. From the rising of the sun till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. For Yahweh is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. And who is like unto Yahweh, Elohim, who dwelleth on high? The rising of the sun, till the time that it goes down, the name of Yahweh shall be praised. Hallelujah. Well, I guess that's all we'll do for. Oh, by the way, we haven't opened with prayer yet. True. We're going to do that right now. Father Yahweh, we, we come before you on this last day of the feast, the last great day, Father, and we thank you so much for calling us to your word and to observe your feast, your appointments, because, Father in heaven, they, they reveal to us your plan and your purpose. And we ask you this day, Father in heaven, to help us to be reminded of your plan and your purpose you know i haven't had the time and haven't really taken the time to put a complete message together and so i'm looking to you and trusting in you that you'll put it together for me because father the message is yours you've written it in your word and Father, you've called us to live it. To live by your appointed times. Which are actually rehearsals for marriage to the most wonderful. The most wonderful being in, in heaven and earth besides yourself. And that is your beloved son, Yahshua, Amashiach. What a blessing we have, Father in heaven, to be able to come before you on these days. And so I'm looking to you to open my mouth, my heart, my mind, to be able to give the message you want us to hear. And Father in heaven, I give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory. And once again, Father in heaven, as always, I put all things into your capable hands because you're the one, Father in heaven, who sends forth your spirit. And you, Father in heaven, you open our minds and our hearts to not only glorify you, but to honor and obey you and to observe 
your ways and your days. Looking forward, Father in heaven, to a greater time when we will be with you and Yahshua for all eternity. And so we thank you and praise you and just ask you to put your words in our hearts this day. In by and through the name of your son, Yahshua the Messiah, we pray and ask these things because he came speaking your words. And so we must also. And it's in his name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, you move this thing back. I've got it. I've got it right here. About there. Yeah. Friend, let's go to, as I always like to do, let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. You know, brethren, uh, the book of Leviticus is a book written to the Levites and to the Levitical priesthood. And uh, if we read the book of Malachi, Levi failed in uh, accomplishing the worship of Yahweh. And so we need to see and understand this. And we need to not allow it to fail. We need to be where Yahweh tells us we need to be on the seventh day Sabbath, we need to have a holy convocation to him. Thank you, brother. And uh, on the annual feast days, we need to be holding holy convocations to him according to his word and his name. And so that's the reason why we're here today. Leviticus 23 and 34 speak to the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days or the feast of Sukkot for seven days unto Yahweh. And I, you know, when I look at this, used to, I couldn't understand why, you know, when Yahshua appears, there are those who are his who are going to be instantaneously resurrected and changed to eternal life. And so I didn't understand exactly what the Feast of Booths or Sukkot was totally about because I wasn't understanding everything in the scripture yet. But, but now I know that in that seventh millennium, what Yahweh is going to do, he set aside the, uh, the Jubilee. We sing about the Jubilee. Well, he's not just going to resurrect his people, the uh, first fruits. But Yahweh showed me that on the Day of Atonement, he's going to restore 
the house of Israel and they're going to be restored to a physical fleshly life. Temporary, a temporary existence. And he's going to deal with them in that time because he's going to give them his spirit in the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. We've already gone over that. But Yahweh is going to restore the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And it'll be to a physical, fleshly resurrection. A temporary resurrection. And that's what, what this Feast of Tabernacles is all about. Sukkot. Well, he says the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Sukkot tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days shall you offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Made by fire. How are we going to make a an offering by fire today? Huh? Well, when Yahweh poured the Spirit out upon the apostles, what did they receive? Didn't they have tongues of fire? And it was tongues of fire, not one tongue of fire, but two tongues. And they actually, if you looked at them, they made a sh the letter sheen. like the hoof of a clean animal that split. <clears throat> well, let's just keep our hands here and let's go over to the book of Hebrews. Now, I kind of planned this ahead of time, but not in the exact manner that I'm giving it. <laughs> Hebrews 1, verse 1. Elohim, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Brethren, there's people in the assembly that don't even believe this. They don't believe that Yahshua pre-existed. I mean, I can read it, and I can believe it. I want to believe the whole word of Yahweh. <clears throat> Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. As we brought out at the beginning of the feast, Yahshua is the DNA that holds everything together. And, you know, Yahweh's the one that opens the womb. He opens the womb through Yahshua the Messiah. There's a lot of people who want to give themselves these spiritual sounding names. But there's also a commandment that we should honor our mother and our father, right? So do you honor your mother and your father if you change your name? I believe that, that my parents 
were inspired to name me and both of my brothers and that my parents were named by their parents. And that was an inspiration given by Yahweh. Because brethren, Yahweh knows everything in in advance. He's the one who, he's the master planner. If you've ever been involved, well, Mike is involved with building a house right now. But he didn't, he didn't start building a house without a plan. Did you, Mike? <laughs> no, you go and you look for a blueprint for a house that you think is going to please you. Architects build and they have everything named. And that's what Yahweh has done. He names everything in advance. He knew us before we were ever brought into this world. Let's look at verse 3 again. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they well you know i made the uh, statement here the other day man builds from the earth up. Yahweh builds from heaven down. It's a reverse. I mean, you know, they had to lay the foundation of this building, right? Before they ever built anything on top of it. But Yahweh builds from the top down. And so he had his son. His son had to become the firstborn from the dead. That's why it says from the, uh, when he asked you from the foundations of the earth, you had to set the foundation before anything else could happen. Yeah. Then the next, the next series in the building is going to be the 144,000 first fruits. They'll be kings and priests there. They'll be following Yahshua wherever he goes. He's going to have more than 12 apostles. He's going to have 144,000. That's quite an entourage. But that's just the beginning, y'all. That's just the beginning. He's going to add more from the Great Tribulation. But he's not going to stop there. Verse 4, being made so much better than angels, messengers. He's the chief messenger. That's the reason why Michael was the archangel the chief angel, the chief messenger. And that's the reason why I have come to see that Yahshua was Michael the archangel. Yahshua is the first messenger, the chief messenger. And that was Michael. Michael means he is like El or who is like El. You know, they say, who is like El? But he is like El. That's Michael. He's obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels angels said he at any time, you are my son. This day have I begotten you and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And brethren, when I uh, when I look at things like this, father and son, I see 
the Hebrew word eben, stone. Because the Hebrew word for stone is Aleph Beit Nun. Aleph and Beit Father, Beit Nun Son. They are one stone together. One stone. And so Yahshua said, I and my Father are one in John chapter 10. And they wanted to take stones up and stone him. He who was the stone, they were going to take stones and stone him. Because they were ignorant. And, and there's too many people in the body, it's supposed to be in the body of the Messiah, but, but are ignorant concerning that relationship. They've had an eternal relationship, brethren. Let's go over here to the book of 1 John real quick. That which was from the beginning, from the Rashid, or the beginning, in the beginning, the Rashid, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life, the Bar Hachai. The word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father. Eternal life which was with the Father. And was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that we also may have fellowship or that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yahshua, Amashiach, Yahshua the Anointed One. He was our eternal life. He was with the Father and he was eternal life. What, why can't people read the word? And believe it. Let's go back over here to Hebrews. And again, when he brings in the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of Yahweh worship him. All the messengers. And messengers can be angels or they can be men. And there are people who will not worship Yahshua because they, they believe that there was only the Father Yahweh and that the Son was created sometimes in the past. He was never created, brethren. He was the Creator. And of the angels, the messenger, he says, who makes his messengers, his angel spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. And so that's what we need to be bringing to the meetings is flames of fire, flames of the Ruach HaKodesh. And we need to be teaching what the word says and believing what the word says and not allow men who don't understand and can't read the word and take it on faith and believe. Keep 
can't believe people like that. We need to separate ourselves from them until they can learn. Or maybe we need to walk among them and tell them the truth. But of course, you know, when you do that, they get angry at you. And they actually want to uh, do bodily harm to you. So let's go back over here to Leviticus chapter 23. Seven days shall you offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So brethren, we don't offer an, an animal and burn it to ashes today. But we need to have the fire of the Spirit to be able to speak out and to declare what the scriptures reveal, fearing nothing, properly fearing Yahweh and his son, Yeshua, Hamashiach. On the eighth day shall be, this is verse 36, picking up. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. That's today. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly and you shall do no servile work therein. Oh, brethren, let's go over here to the book of uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 21. Verse 22. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of uh, his host, spoke unto Abraham, saying, Elohim is with you in all that you do. They knew, they could see that Yahweh was with Abraham. Now therefore, Swear unto me here by Elohim that you will not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto you, you shall do unto me and to the land wherein you have sojourned. Swear. The Hebrew word is Shavah. Seven. Seven yourself. And Abraham said, I will shava. I will seven myself. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, Well, I know not who has done this thing. Neither did you tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. Maybe he's another one of those narcissists. <laughs> and Abraham took sheep, and oxen, and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. So the covenant is made through the swearing, through the sevening of oneself. And 
Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves, and Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which you set by themselves? And he said, For these seven Shabbat, ewe lambs, shall you take of my hand that they may be a witness unto me. And so now we have seven in swearing. Then we have covenant, which is associated with seven. And then we have a witness. Where any call that place Beer Sheba or Beer Sheba. The ear, well, Jerry, that's beer. <laughs> Robert, that's beer. Because there they swear, they sevened both of them. Thus, they made a covenant at Beersheba, and the Bimelech rose up, and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines, and Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of Yahweh, the everlasting El. So once again, what do you have associated with seven? The name of Yahweh. Yeah. The everlasting L. Let's go back over here to uh, Genesis 1 1. Brother, I can beat Genesis 1 1, almost beat it to death, you know, because I, I have, and I have referred to this time after time. But in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Well, it's seven Hebrew words, seven. That's very important and significant because seven is a witness. Seven is a covenant. Well, Bereshit, you have the word covenant in the word Bereshit, beginning, in the beginning. You have the word covenant there. And you have the ever, ever living Elohim. And you have seven. Seven words which contain 28 letters, which is again four times seven. Four is the Dalit, the door to seven. Seven, the witness. Seven, the covenant. Seven, swear. And so what did Yahweh do? He used seven words. He actually swear to his creation. Using seven words in 28 letters. And the second verse says, And the earth she became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So what did Yahweh do? An enemy destroyed through a war against Yahweh. We went through that yesterday. We went over to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28. And we showed who the enemy was. Because the earth was made to reveal the son of righteousness. And then not only the son of righteousness, but all others who Yahweh is going to have in his kingdom of heaven. All others. And so what did he do? He used six days to renew the earth and bring forth the ability of the earth to bear fruit 
and people to support man. And then he rested on the seventh day. So you can say you use seven days. And on that seventh day, he not only blessed it, he rested on it, bringing about peace, rest, and kodeshness or holiness on that day. Well, Peter says that a day with Yahweh is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So what he is promising and which we are on the, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm having a few spasms right now. <laughs> But uh, we're on the verge of the seventh millennium beginning. The sixth millennium ending. And Yahshua says he'll raise up his people on that last day, doesn't he? He's going to raise up his people on the last day. That's the 144,000 first proof. And probably also the people who come through the great tribulation having their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. This word seven is so important, but here's what Yahweh promises over in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. There's a lot of people who cannot accept this word new. Can you? I can, because I've proven it. I've gone through and I've taken everywhere that the word renew, every place where the word renew and the word new appear. And when the word new appears, it's always talking about something new. You can't have a renewed wife, you get a new wife. Well, I don't need a new wife. I've got an old wife here. <laughs> She's pretty ample for me. A little more than I can handle, but anyway. <laughs> Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that not according to the covenant. Why can't they read that? They do, but it hits the wall behind. Yeah, there's a there's a block there. There's a mental block that they cannot receive what this says. Yeah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Well, if you break a covenant, it's broken. I mean, that covenant, brethren, was renewed several times. Yahweh renewed it before they even entered into the land 
the remnant of Israel because he let all of that generation that was 20 years old and above that came out of Egypt, they all died except for Yahshua and Caleb and probably uh, the, the son of uh, Aaron. Is it Phineas, I think? they all were able to go into the land. Those three, but none of the others, other men age 20 and more were allowed to go in. And uh, Aaron and Moses were two that were not allowed to go into the land. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. He gave them his law. He gave them his commandments and they failed to live by them. They failed. And Paul writes, time after time about the carnal mind. It's enmity against Yahweh. It cannot be subject to his law. It is not subject to it, neither indeed can be. So Yahweh is going to do a new thing because this is going to be based upon the word of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh never fails. Man fails. Man fails, but the word of Yahweh never fails. So Yahweh swear. And I can't remember where it says in the in the uh, in the New Testament where Yahweh says, I have sworn. But anyway, let's go over here to Hebrews chapter. I meant to look that scripture up and I, I failed to do it. Hebrews chapter 8. Yeah, I know. That's what it's. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 8. Let's just pick it up in verse 1. Now, the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. Yahweh is no longer going to live in edifices made by the hands of men. You know, I went through, uh, I went through the uh, this in one of our messages on the Sabbath. Isaiah 66, where Yahweh, and, and where when Yahshua was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. Well, the dove is a symbol of peace. And the and what Yahweh showed me is he was supposed to be living in the temple where his name was, but he left the temple. And then there were temple signs that confirmed that 
Yahweh no longer was in the temple. He was in Yahshua. An edifice which Yahweh, the word of Yahweh made, because Yahshua was conceived in the womb of Miriam by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. And he left the temple and he made it obvious to Yahshua and John that Yahshua was the anointed one. And John himself writes that Yahshua is the word by which everything was made and there's not anything made that was not made by him. And that applies even today, brethren. People being born into this world, and I guarantee you, Yahweh opens the womb and he brings the people forth. And I think he gives everybody their name. So it says over here, verse three. Well, wait a minute. Let's let's just let's keep our fingers here in Hebrews eight, and let's go over to uh, Psalms one ten. He always said to my master, my Adam, sit you at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Yahweh shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule you in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be willing in the day of your power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Yahweh has sworn he sworn and will not repent. Yahweh sevened himself right there. That Hebrew word would be Shabbat. Yahweh has sworn and will not repent. You are a priest forever after the estate. I like the word estate better, better than I do. order after the estate of Melchizedek the king of righteousness <coughs> and then it says Yahweh at your right hand shall strike three kings in the day of his wrath well who's at the right hand Yeshua HaMashiach So let's go back to Hebrews chapter 8. For every high priest is ordained, verse 3, to offer gifts and sacrifices, whereof it is a necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. And they were, there were at that time. But Yahweh had the temple destroyed. And brethren, they're, they're, they're uh, in the process 
of starting a new Levitical priesthood and building a new temple over in Jerusalem right now. And they're instituting sacrifices. And I'm telling you one thing, right? There's going to be pressure on people all over the world because they're already declaring that the temple is a temple for all nations. And so they're going to want all nations and all peoples to take part in those sacrifices. According to Ben Noah over there, we're not to imitate the Jews on the Sabbath or the seven feast days. We're only supposed to do the Noah laws in the temple. Well, I know. I, yeah. Ben Noah has sent me a friend request, but I refuse to accept him as a friend. Uh, let's look at Isaiah 66 real quick. Keep your finger here in Hebrews chapter 8. Boy, I tell you what, they are ripping me a new one today. Thus says Yahweh, verse 1, The heaven is my throne and the earth my, is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things has my hand made. And all those things have been, says Yahweh. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. He that kills an ox is as if he slew a man. So it's like committing murder if you offer an ox. It's like you're, you're murdering a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut, cut off a dog's neck. He that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burns incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have cho chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did, none did answer. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that which I delighted not. And that's what they're doing now. They're wanting to set up another Levitical priesthood and they can't read the book of Malachi. Yeah, Malachi says, and you're doing this again? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Hebrews chapter... Eight in verse four. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests who offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. The example and shadow of heavenly things. Brethren, once the heavenly things have come, you don't need the physical any longer. Once the true sacrifices come, you don't need sacrifices anymore. You have the one sacrifice that accounts for all eternity, and that's Yahshua the Messiah. As Moses was admonished of Yahweh, when he was about to make the tabernacle for a sea, says he that you make all things according to the pattern shown you in the mount. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry 
by how much also he is mediator of a better covenant. Well, if it's a renewed covenant, how can it be better? It's a new covenant. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place should have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. A new covenant. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says Yahweh. Now, let's see. Let's go back over here to the book of Zechariah real quick. <coughs> Here's something else that people can't read and see. I think it's either Zechariah 9 or 11. It's nine. Mm. No, I guess it's eleven then. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's just pick it up in verse 1. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour your cedars. Howl fir trees, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty, this is 11, verse 2. Zechariah 11, 2. How will o you oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. There's a voice of howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus says Yahweh my Elohim, feed the flock of slaughter, whose possessors slay them, and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be Yahweh, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, says Yahweh. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand, and into the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land out of their hand. I will not deliver them. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. This is month one. This is the first month. This would be the month that contains the Passover. And the three shepherds he's talking about here, there were three shepherds, major shepherds, shepherding the people, in Yahshua's day. And they were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. <laughs> Obvious, right? Then said I, I will not feed you that that dies, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let the rest eat every one of the flesh of another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I made with all the people. Yahweh said he was going to break his covenant. Why? Because they break it. They broke the covenant. And Yahweh says, I'm going to break my covenant with all the people. So he's got to have a new covenant, brethren. And that's what we're reading about over here in the book of Hebrews.
Back to Hebrews 8, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, says Yahweh, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says Yahweh. They said, if you go back to the book of uh, the book of Exodus, they said all that Yahweh has said we will obey and do. That word do is asa and it means to work. That's the reason why Paul wrote the way he did. It's not according to our works any longer, but it's according to what Yahweh puts on our heart to obey him. Not according, verse 9 again, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them an Elohim, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Has that time come yet? No, it's not here yet. And every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he says a new covenant, he has made the first old. Uh, the, see, Joshua, when Joshua administered the, the bread and the cup, it was the blood of the new covenant. The new covenant. He used that word new. Paul reiterates that in chapter 9, verse 14. Yeah. In that he says in the new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Let's go over here to 10. Hebrews 10. And verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. But having, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, a new and living way through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of Yahweh, let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He promised. The Hebrew word promise is also dabar. He worded. He said it, brethren. And what he says, the word of Yahweh stands fast forever. What the word of Yahweh does will not fail. But what we promise will fail. 
we need to understand that and not trust in ourselves. But we need to look to Yahweh and trust in him and his son, Yahshua the Messiah, because that's the word. That's the word. So today is a set is not a seventh day. It's a seventh annual feast. So today is a seventh day, but it's also an eighth day. I talked about eight, the number eight and the word uh, for eight yesterday. And eight has to do with a have love. But it also has to do with a new beginning. Oh, my lands. Hey, we're having services. What? Okay. That's my daughter, Rachel. She needs something real quick. Okay, so today is also an eighth day and eight has to do not only with the love of Yahweh, which is going to be revealed, but it has to do with something new, a new beginning, which let's go over here to the book of Revelation. Chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and there was no more sea. He's going to bring forth a new heaven and a new earth. Now, brethren, what he's going to do is at the beginning, verse 11 of uh, chapter 20. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Well, we know that the devil, Satan, the devil is going to be cast in there. And there are others, sadly, who do his bidding and won't repent of it. And they will have their name blotted out of the book of life. But he's bringing forth a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, 
New Jerusalem coming down from Yahweh out of heaven. Brethren, there's people today that think that we need to go to Jerusalem to keep the feast. Why? It's called in the, in the book of Revelation, Sodom in Egypt. Because the Jerusalem that's there today has been built by the hands of man. It's not a holy city. They have every abomination that happens in this earth is taking place over there. We need to see that. We need to know it. We need to understand it. The new heavens and the new earth are coming forth by the power of the word of Yahweh. And I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I do know it says that the the old heaven and the old earth are passing away. And he's bringing forth a new heavens and a new earth. Well, just stop and think how Yahweh is building here. Because first, he's got the king of the kingdom. That's Yahshua the Messiah. Second, he's going, Yahshua's going to have his closest people, 144,000 closest people, the first fruits. Third, he's going to have those who come out of the great tribulation. Fourth, he's going to resurrect Israel and Judah. And then fifth, he's going to resurrect all others who have ever lived before. And according to their works, they're going to be judged. Because he's got to have, you know, a kingdom requires a king, it requires a government and and all kinds of uh, interaction in between. You look at the, the government of the United States today. And what do we have? We have a, a president. We have his cabinet. Then we have a Senate. Then we have a, a House of Representatives. And then you go down into the states and and you have the governor of the state and you got his government under him and then you've got cities and towns and you've got mayors and all it's it's all has to do with government doesn't it well that's the way Yahweh is he's building his government today and then he's got to have territory a kingdom's got to have that a king it's got to have government and it has to have subjects and so the last are going to be the subjects. And the last is the new heavens and the new earth. And I don't know what it's going to be like. But it's going to be far greater <coughs> and far more significant and far more detailed than anything that we've got today, brethren. Yahweh says it is because he's making it. And he's going to bring his own city, a new Jerusalem, down. People trying to get in touch with me. <laughs> but the first earth and the first heaven are going to pass away. And there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth and a new city, New Jerusalem. And that's the city Abraham saw. That's the city that Abraham wanted. Isaac and Jacob. Also, huh? And they seen it afar off. They saw it afar off. And brethren. It's closer now than it ever has been, but it's still a ways away yet. But it's coming. And we need to submit ourselves to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah.
to his word and let his word rule in our lives and let him work with us, lead us, guide us, teach us, humble us. Humble us. Because I guarantee you one thing. I don't deserve this calling. Never have. Never will. Not of myself. Not of myself. So keep these in mind, brethren. You know, we've had some, some difficulties here at the feast this year. But we can't let that get us down. We've got to have vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's accusations that keep things stirred up, that's Satan. Satan is the accuser. Let's don't run around accusing. Let's go on the faith of Yahweh, the faith of Yahshua, the faith of Abraham. Because Abraham believed. And that Hebrew word is Amman. He believed. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. So leave this place believing. We'll stay here for a little while. <laughs> long enough to eat you know but uh stay here in faith and when you leave 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 in faith and live your life in faith scripture states there is none righteous not one yet we walk with the spiritual growth of yashua hallelujah brother hallelujah yahweh bless you all uh I'd like to call on a, a brother of mine, Johnny McCarty, to close with prayer and ask a blessing on the food and the fellowship of the rest of the day. Amen. Yahweh, we come before you now with humble hearts on this, Father, the last great day of your wonderful feast that foreshadows the return of your son and the establishment of his kingdom, Father, and ultimately on this last great day, the establishment of the new heavens and the new earth. For Father, this old earth is worn like a worn out garment. Every day it gets worse. It gets more mossy, not only physically, but in the spiritual, because Satan is doing his best now to <clears throat> destroy all he can. That he destroys not only, especially, in his, in your people, in the body of Yahshua. But he is destroying the world. More and more, the mask is coming off of Satan. He's revealing himself. And stubborn man is looking to worship him. And Father, we thank you with all our hearts that you have chosen us not to be some great and grandiose, but that you have chosen the poor of the earth to confound the wise. And you have chosen us and been merciful to us, merciful beyond all our understanding and knowing. So Father, please be with us as we go from here to our homes, and guide us safely there so that when we arrive, 
we will arrive with a renewed spirit. And now, Father, we ask that you would bless this meal that has been prepared for us and that you will give us strength, Father, to understand and to fight for your word. We ask and pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, and soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You okay, Terry? Yeah. I just need to stop this. Now, what's that left? Sure. Yeah. That was. Uh,